So I want to welcome you to our second little film in our small series called Pattern of the Month. The first one was uh, one of my favorite flies, the Patagorva tied on the TTT. Today I'm going to tie another one of my favorite flies. Uh, first of all, I would like to start by thanking you all for all the fantastic feedback and all the cred we got for the first film. Thank you for that. Uh, I also want to thank you, all of you that's been subscribing to our material packs um, uh, that's been sent out to you. And of course, we are also doing a material pack for uh, both subscribers and you can also buy it on the web uh, for the second one. Uh, unfortunately, we started this right in the middle of the Corona crisis, uh, where the logistic uh, situation in the world has been terrible. All the logistic companies just uh, crashed. And uh, that meaning a few of you had to wait quite a long time to get your packs and, and it's out of control, but we I want to excuse for that. I know all of you would like to have this to, to start tying as fast as possible. Um, this time I'm going to tie a fly with a totally different design. I'm going to tie one of these long winged fly. Um, I'm going to tie a samurai. And uh, I started my uh, experimenting doing this long winged fly a long, long time ago. And, um, and uh, it took, <laughs> of course, many attempts before I actually set what's today the design of the samurai. A design that's given me uh, a few hundred fish and it's given people on salmon rivers all around the world thousands of good fish. It's a really proven fly that is really good and handy to have in a box. It's a good weapon. Um, the best known long wing fly is by far the sunray shadow, I would say. Uh, collie dogs are well known, but the Sunray Shadow is the, the most fished and best known long wing fly. I was fortunate to work uh, with Ray Brooks uh, as a, a ghillie on his beat on the Queen of Rivers on the Lardo back in the 80s. And Ray had this idea that the 13 and a half centimeters Sunray should imitate a baby eel. Um, I don't believe in this imitation theory. I don't believe that the general practitioner is taken for a shrimp either. They're both fantastic patterns, but the imitation, I don't really know. I don't believe in that. The samurais is what I call the fast swimmer. It's a fly that's meant to be fished really fast, to be fished on a big downstream belly, showing the side of the fly to the fish. And um, I have a little special technique on how to create this belly. And if you're interested to see that, you can also check in and see the little film clip on our YouTube channel called Create More Drift. This is the way I show that. That's the way I, I prefer to fish my, my uh, samurais. Um, the one I'm going to do today is one of the newest uh, um, little flies in this little family. Uh, I call it the D Samurai. It uh, or originates and got its name from the Aberdeenshire D, the Scottish River, one of my favorite rivers, fantastic salmon river. It's got its color combination from the fly that's given me most fish on the D. Uh, also one of my designs or one of my patterns, I call the D Sheep. Fished them really small, but uh, this fly here, it's got this same color combination, but it's got the long drop formed uh, shape. I always prefer the drop form, mostly wide, uh, very translucent, but wide with a heavy drop form. This got a different profile. This is the slim fly, but still I use materials, dubbing and hackles to create that drop form. It's a simple fly to tie. There are a few small tricks that's important to, to, to get that fly to have the appearance you want. And uh, I will try to show you here. Uh, it's uh, 
not tricky, but a few important things. So let's get into the time and see what we can do here, or if we can do a really nice D samurai. Okay, uh, most of these samurais, uh, when I tie them, I tie them on a black uh, tubing. Uh, the only one I tie on a fluorescent tubing is actually the D Samurai. And I'm going to tie it on a fluorescent yellow tubing. And I'm going to use a colored cone, meaning that I will do the black extra small. And um, again, I must talk about the importance of the flag flexible cone uh, tube because it makes the fly so much stronger. This being flexible is so much better than it's being uh, hard. Uh, they will break sooner or later. Okay, so what I do is that I start by cutting this at a little angle like this, putting it onto the needle. I cut my uh, X small at an angle makes it a little more easy to get the, the cone on. And here it's very simple to see that you actually get the extra small to go quite far in to the medium tubing. So it's, it makes it stronger. Okay, so I'm gonna tie on a black 12-0 thread and a little trick on the, the bobbin is that if you want to grease it a bit you just pull it over your nose grease it up to make it slip a little easier i take the thread and i put the thread onto the part that i've cut this way the medium will hold the extra small. I don't need any glue. glue. I can have the flexible system without making it crack because it's stiff. So don't put any glue, glue on here. Just put on a little bit of thread over the part that's uh, cut and that's all you need to put them together. Okay, then uh, I want a tapered uh, body and uh, the, the rearest part of the body, the fluorescent part, is the bare tubing. I then take the thinnest material, a mirage tinsel, and tie it in underneath. And here, when I have the black thread on a light tube with the mirage, I can't go back and tie the mirage over because then the thread, when it gets wet, the thread will be seen through. So I take the Mirage and I go back. So I save about five to six millimeters and I turn front and overlap these turns. So I get a really nice little tag. Three or four turns of thread and then just cut it off. The next material is a little bit thicker. Uh, it's a braid. It's our own uh, SSS braid. It's very, very, very strong. It's important to have a strong material to tie a strong fly, a durable fly. Uh, I tie this in again uh, underneath. Go back with the thread a little bit and take the thread front. Then I take this and I make sure I cover the, the, the thread so I don't have one or two turns of bare thread here. That's going to make the fly break sooner or later. I overlap it, go front so I create a body that is tapered. For me, a beautiful fly will grow to the front like this. And the way I choose the materials doing this, even it's simple tying, it, it makes a good proportions and it, it makes the fly look good. And the whole idea behind the drop form is to get the fly that's tapered and to look like everything that lives in moving water is drop form. That's why I want also this part of the fly to be like that. 
Okay, then I use dubbing. I use uh, glitz um, uh, to have a good uh, long fiber dubbing is very very important for all my tying but it's especially important for the the samurai tying and when i dub it there are a million tricks here and the the only thing i never ever do is use wax here if you wax your thread the wax will melt on about 50 celsius meaning that if you tie it in with wax the wax will leave the fly you leave it in the back of the trunk of the car uh, on a sunny day and it's going to be warmer than 50 degrees and the wax will disappear and the material will come loose. So you dub it in and, and you dub it on without wax. I put the thread holder in one hand, I have another hand, take a little bit of dubbing and I spin it on. And the only important things when you do this is that you actually spin your fingers one way like this and that you press your fingers hard it's like you twin it on if i twin and untwin back and forth like this material won't stay and it's much better to take a little bit of material at the time so i tie this in put it on the fly take a little more Do the same thing, put it on the fly again. Make sure this now is growing, so it's more and more material. And also make sure that you put a nap on. If it looks like it's not overdressed while you put this on, before you brush it, it's for sure will look too slim when you brushed it out. Then I take this apart and I put the thread down on the tube again normally when you dub a body you do it a, a full body and you come up and you need to have like three or four millimeters to keep a place for the wing and hackles the whole idea on the samurai is to build up the translucent form the drop form with the dubbing so what i do here is that i will put some dubbing here and i will put some dubbing in front of the wing too and that's going to be even more heavy and it, it and i brush it really hard when i brush it now you're going to see uh, a new thing here it's actually a prototype uh, of uh, one of our new tools coming soon and i can tell you uh I used to use uh, regular Velcro all the time. This is a much stronger, much meaner material, meaning this is very, very simple to brush with. And I brush this out and I hold the fibers back, take them down and I taper. Take the brush and brush it down on the side so I get a little bit of a flat place to put the wing on top here. If there are a few too long ones, I can take them away afterwards. But I, the dubbing will help to make the translucent uh, front, the heaviest part of this fly, is gonna be fairly long fly. Um, I started using uh, most of the, or all of my first samurais were tied with the only a black wing. What I did then is that I, I added a little bit of white underneath. Maybe it came from the original Sanri shadow that had a little bit of squirrel tail, gray squirrel under the black wing. But uh, to get the contrast, I think is good. It's good in all flies, I think, except the ones that should disappear in the water. But, uh, so, but on this one, I will use yellow. And um, since we source all this material to you, to your uh, uh, fly packs, I have uh, all this fantastic material now. And this is a fox and I will use uh, the fox hair in a little bit different way than I normally do. So if I take a part of this and uh, I always, when I cut material, I cut all the way down close to the skin so I get 
everything um, of the hair. Oh, I, this guy wants to disappear here. And normally, when you tie uh, the broad profi profile, you need these uh, uh, under fur to create the volume. And normally what I do is that I tie it in wide like this. And I use half the diameter of the tubing. To make the broad profile, the fish will see the fly from underneath and to create as much movement as possible. But here, when I want to have this very slim proof profile, I do this differently. I take this away. I take away all of the under fur to get only the straight hairs. And I move my fingers up and I taper this, pulling out a few of the strands to get a good taper on the wing. And I just tie this in on top. Making sure that this is not too long now. The length of the tubing decides where the hook should be. I want to have the hook in the center. Maybe this fly will be like 10 centimeters. I, instead of put taking my thumbnail and pressing down the hair on the side like this, that I normally do like this, I put a couple of turns on and I pull it up and make sure that I get all the fibers to be on top of the tube. Nothing should be seen from underneath. This should be a very slim wing on top of the tube. Okay, take this and I tie this. I cut this off. This is the underwing, maybe 20% of the full wing. I then take a black hair, should be uh, straight. You can use any straight hair, goat, or even uh, even bucktail if you want. I, I'm not a fan of bucktail, but you can use any hair here. Sometimes I do the same here. I take away and untangle by pulling through the brush like this. Move my fingers up, look at the tapering. Make sure I have a wing that will have a very long, slim point like this, and it should be longer than the yellow. Hold it down and tie it in. Now I make sure so the yellow is not seen on the sides. I don't want the yellow to be down on the sides here. Cut away. And since I'm going to have a lot of dubbing on top here, I don't have to cut this so close. Let's move it down. I then take you just a little bit of glue and the glue will uh, make this go from the weakest part to the strongest part. I use uh, support. Put my finger first and then I put the glue on. This way I'm sure I get the glue exactly where I want it. So I'm, I'm gonna use uh, uh, natural jungle cocks on, the, on this fly too. I, I also use a lot of substitutes and we're actually working with a new uh, substitute that uh, will move better uh, than what's on the market today. But uh, again, if you use natural feathers, make sure you have a cytis and do it legally. Uh, we are fighting to save the wild fish and, and we need also to be on the whole ecosystem's side uh, also to make sure that these fantastic birds can have a life. Okay, so I picked two feathers. And if I look at these, the 
This one is curving really nicely. This should be on my side here, but it's absolutely flat like this. And to make it flat, the jungle cock will stand out like this and the fly won't look so good. So I take this and I, use, I work it on my fingernail and I create, hope you can see it here, how I create this, flat, this feather to curve. It will follow the wing both ways like this. I use smaller feathers than most people and I just love those feathers. I like to have them uh, shown in full and I tie them in uh, the way uh, that uh, if I need to adjust it, I can have my, my thumbnail like this a little bit, pull it down. Um, I like to have them long. I like to have them follow the wing. So when I put the hackles on, the feather is still seen uh, behind the hackles. Again, the other one, it's curving nicely this way, but it's absolutely flat like this. And I take it and I curve it over my finger. This is a mechanically uh, shape. This will stay this way. Wet or dry, doesn't really matter. And I take this fly, this feather, and I look from the top, make sure it's just as long as the other one, and I just tie it in. Make sure it looks good. It's actually like this with the feathers that you dye. I dyed this a little bit yellow that they have a tendency to, to be a little stiffer. But uh, I think that looks good from my side, hopefully from your side too. Then it comes what's significative for the samurai. And here's the dubbing that comes in front of the wing. This is just to build up that profile. And even though, uh, I want a slim profile. I want to have the drop form. So that's why I do this. I take my fingers and I hold down the jungle cock and I back up with the dubbing, making sure the dubbing is uh, covering where I tied in the wing. Put some more on. And this now needs to look brutal. It needs to look like it blood is sweet has been gone crazy you need to put more on uh, than you think because if you don't you start brushing this and you will have to add more dubbing to it I now moved my thread also down to the extra small tubing and what I'm going to tie in here is just a little bit of hackle. Now I take the brush and I put my fingers and I cover up the jungle cock and then I brush this. And I brush it out really, really good. And the good thing with the glitz dubbing is that it's long fiber. There are, most of these fibers are eight centimeters. Meaning that if you tie them in in the middle, you can brush them at four centimeters. And uh, with this brutal brush here, it's easy. Taper it a little bit. Looks like I get, take away the longest ones. But what I do here, I, I create something that where the light can go through it very, very nicely. Uh, now it's only hackles and uh, I'm gonna hackle this with two different hackles. I'm gonna use um, black and blue and uh, I, will, uh, <clears throat> I will start with the blue and put the black in front. And I can tell you that here, I fish samurais from tiny small samurais from three to four centimeters up to really big ones. Maybe the biggest I caught a fish on is 20 plus centimeters, 22 or so. On the most of them, I use only soft tackles. They are very 
move a lot creates that little extra movement in the water and that's what the hackles are for. On the big ones, I will add an ostrich hackle. Ostrich is a fantastic, very durable material uh, that will swim really, really nice. And I will either tie this in with both sides or I will strip the feather and tie in one side, depending on how much hackle I want. One thing that I do, especially on this little fly, is that in the small sizes, I also use these peacock body feathers. Look at the shine on these feathers. They're absolutely superb. What I do here is I tie one in and I use that behind the black and this has a lot of natural fl fluorescence to it and it will shine through the black fibers in the water and make a very, very nice uh, appearance to the fly. But on this one, I'm going to do the, it the regular way with the soft tackles. And what I do is that I, I uh, decide where I have the right length and how much I need. And since I'm going to do two hackles, I don't need that much of the feather. Uh, I, uh, this was a bit tough to work with. Uh, I just hold it back and like I do with all my hackle uh, feathers, I time in in the tip and a little trick, I think I showed you last time too, but when I'm gonna cut something where it's very accurate, I always put the scissor onto the finger like this and I move the uh, feather into where I have uh, where I have support. So this way I can cut this like tenth of a millimeter or I very, very accurate. And then I tie this in a few turns and I double it. Doubling means putting all the fibers one side. So I take this, create the three finger triangle and I just tie this in, forcing the fibers to go one side of the feather every turn. When they're this soft, they can be a bit tricky to tie tie in. The softer they are, the trickier they are. But of course, when you look at the fire feather like this, this extremely soft uh, fibers will create also a lot of motion to the fly. When you do it the way I do it, where you work with the turbo cone that will create turbulence, that fly can't collapse. So this will have this fantastic movement, no matter what, how fast the current is, it's like the fly got its own little stream to swim in. Okay, so I just do the same again, put support like this and I cut it, do the little triangle, tie it in, Take this and I, fibers all over the place here. And I just double it, holding back. And uh, normally there it's enough to do this uh, two turns. I can do, if I just want to have a little bit of black, I can do one turn or I can decide to just strip one side of the feather too. Makes it easier to get few fibers even. And I tie this in and I cut it fairly close. So now I have hackles and uh, wing and all this ready. And uh, one of the advantages uh, with the Samurais uh, compared to the Sunray Shadows is that the Sunray Shadow didn't have a cone. It's a long wing fly with a, where the plastic will, will drop down because of the hook and the wing will be straight out. And working uh, at Brooks's place on the Lerdal, we had quite a few fish that were hooked right outside the mouth here. And we didn't understand why. Now, to me, it's obvious that the long wing with the drop down hook 
made the fish take the wing and the hook will come on the outside. So the balanced fly will balance up, the wing will be, the hook will be in the center and the fish will be hooked in a better way. Okay, so putting on a cone, uh, you know I have of the turbo cones, I have three different uh, uh, sizes, the A46 and 8 millimeters. Uh, but, and there's many, many colors. <laughs> On the uh, D Samurai, I fish them. Sometimes I actually tie them with a yellow extra small and a black cone. But most of the time I, I use the, the black extra small and I use different colors of, of cones. I fish them with a fluorescent uh, yellow one. I fish them with a gold one. And I fish them with the, also the orange uh, metallic one. And uh, what I'm gonna do here, I'm gonna put on an orange, or a, sorry, a yellow metallic one. I'm gonna put on the yellow metallic extra small here. This means this cone is six millimeters wide. Uh, so it will create uh, a fly that will be about, if you do it scientific, it's 6.6 .6 millimeters wide and it will have a turbulent stream that will be 6 centimeters long. This fly is probably back to here maybe 12 centimeters long, but this tip hanging out uh, will uh, uh, swim really nicely behind the turbulent stream. If I want this fly to be even slimmer, I'll go down and do the four centimeter. This one here, it's, this size is like right on the edge to what I would do. I can do the extra small uh, six or I can do the micro four, depending on how wide I want the fly to be. The cone will decide the pro profile on the fly. That's why when you look at our assortments, we have different sizes, but also different shape. So you can create your the what the, the profile on your fly that you really want. But I'm gonna do this. Okay, a lot of talk here, but there's a lot of ideas behind this. <laughs> uh, if it's important or not, you can judge yourselves. Okay, so I take a little glue and I use support again and I put the glue a few millimeters away so I put on the extra small yellow metallic turbo, tungsten turbo one, and I push it down and twist it. So I get the glue to spread on the sides. Okay, fly is ready. Take it out of the vise. And uh, I, uh, Use support of the finger, put the scissors on the finger and I cut it. This way I can cut it really accurate, around three millimeters using Newton's uh, ideas that things want to go down. And uh, this way I open this as a little flower. I do it carefully, I can do it a little bit more. And I just wait until it dries before I touch it. This way I get a hole for my leader. And uh, <clears throat> the fly is ready. So here we have the D Samurai. You have the long slim wing with very, very few strands here. Uh, you have the heavy dubbing that will help give that uh, drop form and the translucent. And you have the hackles that will give some motion and also help to do that uh, perfect drop shape. It's a really, it's a fast swimmer and isn't the best takes you can get when you fish a really good downstream belly or a super fast fly and they just come and they just chase it and just grab it. I think that's uh, pretty fantastic. I fish these flies uh, from uh, all down to like a two centimeter fly with just a millimeter of tubing. 
up to uh, three times this size, 20 centimeter, really fat flies. It's a, it's a fly that you can fish in different sizes. I also think that it's important uh, to have this slimmer uh, shape of fly in your box. I, I, I always carry everything, I'm crazy about flies, but I carry everything from the big to the smallest fly, but also I'd like to have this different profile, the slimmer fly and the fatter fly, the fly, the fly that's really translucent and also this, uh, this fast swimmer. Um, I showed you three different ones, the hackle with the ostrich, uh, this regular one, uh, and I showed you the small, tiny little one. And um, I actually have a, a wallet that's uh, full of, of samurai, and uh, uh, these two big ones will for sure go in the wallets. It's so easy that the few strands you have here is killed by the box. But for the small flies, I carry a, a box, and, and actually we call this the Samurai box. Uh, it's perfect for the small flies. The smallest one I add here will go in the, in the Samurai box. It's, it's easy, it fits in my pocket. I actually work, can keep four of those in one pocket, and it's an easy way to take out the small flies uh, from the little box. As before, we've done, uh, as I told you, uh, the subscription pack for, for uh, to tie at least 10 of those. Uh, but for those of you who prefer, we have the fly of the month, which is six of those flies, if you don't tie, or if you need some extra, extra flies. And um, now I hold my thumbs that the logistic companies will do their job and actually deliver this to you so you get it right around when this film comes out. So now I tied you last film, a TTT, a fat, broad fly, my design on how to fish the loose body uh, behind a, a metal a tungsten tube that will open up and create a volume, a really fat fly. And I tied you now the the samurai, which is the slim design, uh, the the way I prefer to fish this uh, this uh, uh, narrower pro profile fly and the long fly. Next uh, month, I'm uh, I'm going to show you something different. I'm going to show you something that isn't that proven. Um, these two fly designs have taken uh, tens of thousands of probably 100,000 fish. Uh, what I'm going to show you next uh, uh, film, next month, is a brand new idea on how to use certain materials to create a fly that is very translucent and got a lot of motion to it. Uh, it's I call them butterflies and uh, it's something that I will fish a lot this season. And uh, even though it hasn't taken any fish yet, uh, I think it's such an interesting design and interesting idea. So I want to show it to you and share it with you next, next month. So we're ready with this fly and I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you picked up some small tricks, perhaps. And uh, uh, I just want to say, Thank you very much for watching.